we now start our discussion of the third module of chapter 6. We will continue from where we had left in the second module and we will continue our discussion of the convergence theorems for the process of Lebesgue integration in this module also. So, we first go to the first slide of this module. So, we start again with the last definition of the module 2 of chapter 6. So, again recall that the Lebesgue integral of a non-negative measurable function f defined on a measurable set E is defined in this way as the supremum of integral over E s d mu, where s is less or equal to f and s is a simple function. And if in particular the value of the integral is finite, then we say that f is Lebesgue integrable. Next, we want to extend this definition to arbitrary measurable functions. So, consider an arbitrary measurable function f defined on a measurable set E. f is said to be Lebesgue integrable on E if f plus and f minus both are Lebesgue integrable on E. Recall that what is f plus? f plus is defined as maximum of f and 0 and it is called the positive part of the function f and f minus is defined as maximum of minus f and 0 and it is called the negative part of the function f both f plus and f minus are measurable if and only if f is measurable and f is equal to f plus minus f minus. So, f is Lebesgue integrable on E if and only if both its positive and negative parts f plus and f minus are Lebesgue integrable on E and we define the Lebesgue integral of f over E as the difference of the two Lebesgue integrals integral f plus d mu over E minus integral f minus d mu over E. Now, you can observe that why we take both f plus and f minus as Lebesgue integrable, because if both the integrals are equal to infinity. In that case, on the right hand side, I will have something like infinity minus infinity, which cannot be defined. So, for arbitrary measurable functions, Lebesgue integrability is more important. And obviously, you can see that sometimes for arbitrary measurable functions, the value of the Lebesgue integral also may not exist. Now, if we consider the function mod f, we know that f is measurable if and only if mod f is measurable, because mod f is equal to f plus plus f minus. So, we can conclude that a measurable function f is Lebesgue integrable on a measurable set E, if and only if mod f is Lebesgue integrable and obviously, mod integral f d mu is less or equal to integral over E mod f d mu. Again from the theory of Riemann integration, recall that if f is Riemann integrable on closed interval a b, this implies that mod f is Riemann integrable on closed interval a b, but generally the converse is not true. For example, if we take a function f in such a way that 
f takes the value 1 for all rational numbers and the value minus 1 for all irrational numbers in closed 0 1, then it is easy to prove that f is not remain integrable, but if we consider mod f, then mod f becomes the constant function 1 and so it is remain integrable. So, the remain integrability of mod f does not imply the remain integrability of the function f. So, this is another point where we have difference with the remain integration process. Now, we try to understand what is the difference between the existence of the Lebesgue integral of a function and the Lebesgue integrability of a function. Suppose, we start with a sequence of pairwise disjoint open intervals in closed interval a b i n such that square root of the length of i n if we take the infinite sum. So, sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity root l i n this series is convergent. So, its sum is finite. Let sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity alpha n be a convergent sequence of real numbers. Suppose, a function h is defined by this way, h x takes the value alpha n by root l i n, if we take x from the interval i n and it takes the value 0 otherwise. Now, see that if we consider the mod function h, then integral a to b mod h d mu, this becomes the infinite series sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity mod alpha n. That is the sum of the absolute values of alpha n. And this shows that the function h is Lebesgue integrable if and only if the series sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity alpha n is absolutely convergent. So, if I take a series sigma alpha n which is convergent, but not absolutely convergent and consider the corresponding function h, then see that integral a to b mod h d mu becomes infinity and so h is not Lebesgue integrable, though integral a to b h d mu exists. We now present another very important theorem of Lebesgue integration, which is known as the dominated convergence theorem. Suppose, f n is a sequence of Lebesgue integrable functions on a measurable set E, such that the sequence f n is pointwise convergent to the function f, that is f x equal to limit n, f n x exists for every x belonging to E. If there is a Lebesgue integrable function g, which dominates the sequence f n, that is mod f n x is less or equal to g x for all n belonging to capital N and this is true for all x. Then the conclusion is that the limit function f also should be Lebesgue integrable and limit over n integral e mod f n minus f d mu should be equal to 0 and from which we can get the desired result that integral f d mu over e is obtained as the limit of the 
values of the integrals integral f n d mu over e. C here we do not assume like monotone convergence theorem that f n is monotonically increasing. So, here f n is just any sequence of Lebesgue integrable functions and the convergence is here point wise. First note that each f n is Lebesgue integrable and so is measurable and we again note that the limit function of a sequence of measurable functions is also measurable. So, f is also measurable. Further, since mod f n is less or equal to g and this is true for all n. So, taking limit n tends to infinity on the left hand side, we have mod f less or equal to g, which implies that integral of mod f d mu over e, this is less or equal to integral of g d mu over e. And we have already assumed g to be Lebesgue integrable. So, the integral on the right hand side is finite. So, this shows that integral of mod f over e is also finite. So, mod f is Lebesgue integrable and consequently f is also Lebesgue integrable. Again, consider this inequality. If we consider the sequence of functions f n minus f, now see that mod f n minus f is less or equal to mod f n plus mod f. So, this is less or equal to 2 g because each of the terms are less or equal to g. So, if we consider this sequence of functions 2 g minus mod f n minus f, observe that f n is measurable for each n, f is measurable, g is measurable. So, 2 g minus mod f n minus f is a measurable function for each n and from the above inequality it is clear that each of these functions are non-negative. So, the sequence 2 g minus mod f n minus f, this is a sequence of non-negative measurable functions. Though we do not know anything about its convergence, so we can apply the most general convergence result that is Fatou's lemma on this sequence of functions. Now, observe that since f n converges to f everywhere, so mod f n minus f tends to 0. So, 2 g minus mod f n minus f, this sequence is actually convergent to 2 g. So, on the left hand side we have integral over e 2 g d mu, we start with this integral. This is equal to integral over e liminf 2 g minus mod f n minus f d mu and by Fatou's lemma this is less or equal to liminf n integral over e 2 g minus mod f n minus f d mu and this is equal to limit in f integral 2 g d mu plus integral over e minus mod f n minus f d mu because we have shown in our course that for two measurable functions f g integral f plus integral g is equal to integral f plus g and this is equal to integral 2 g d mu because this is a constant. So, we can treat 
it as a constant sequence. And the second term, if we take the minus sign outside the integral, then we have the second term equal to minus lim sup n integral over e mod f n minus f d mu. Now, since g is assumed to be Lebesgue integrable, so we know that the value of this integral is finite and consequently the value of the integral of 2 g is also finite. So, from the last inequality, we can cancel out integral 2 g d mu from both sides and consequently we get this that lim sup n integral over e mod f n minus f d mu should be less or equal to 0. But see that mod f n minus f is always greater or equal to 0 that is non negative and so integral mod f n minus f over e, this is always greater or equal to 0 for all n. So, I have a sequence of non-negative real numbers and we know that if we take a sequence of non-negative real numbers, which is not convergent to 0, then it must have positive lim soup. It cannot have negative lim soup. So, in the above inequality, we cannot have lim sup over n integral over e mod f n minus f d mu less than 0. Hence, we must have lim sup over n integral over e mod f n minus f d mu should be equal to 0. But if lim sup is equal to 0, then lim inf is also equal to 0 and this means that the limit exists and we have limit over n integral over e mod f n minus f d mu is equal to 0. And recall that we have already shown that mod integral f a d mu minus integral f d mu is less or equal to integral over e mod f n minus f d mu. So, since the right hand side is 0, left hand side also is 0 as n tends to infinity. And this shows that integral f d mu over e is equal to limit n integral f n d mu over e, which is our desired result. So, in this third module of chapter 6, we have proved another convergence theorem, namely dominated convergence theorem for Lebesgue integration. And we have seen the difference between the Lebesgue integrability and the existence of Lebesgue integral of a measurable function. And with this, we finish the third module and also the whole chapter 6.